Yeah, let me show you something. Yeah, I've, I've been checking that out. It's beautiful. It looks really good on you. Yeah, it looks like a NATO, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. W what's your relationship with NATO straps? I think that they're very beautiful. I just can't deal with the extra layer of strap in between the watch and my wrist. Two layers. Yeah. It's yeah. The, well, come here. Check this out. Yo, wait. Hold on, hold on. What? Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Anachronist Podcast. I'm Max from Watch Crunch. This is Josh. Hello. Today we have an exciting announcement. It's something that we've been working behind the scenes on for really the last three years plus. So Josh, tell me a little bit more about what you think about NATOs. I love the aesthetic of a NATO strap, but for my everyday lifestyle, I can't get behind all the extra bulk that they add to a watch. So it sounds like what you're saying is you love the look, oh, but yeah. you hate the fit. Definitely. Right? I've always loved the look of the NATO. I love the history. But for me, there's really two major drawbacks of the traditional dual pass NATO. Number one, it puts two layers of material between right. the case back and your watch. Right. And, you know, manufacturers spent millions of dollars literally designing thinner movements, right. refining the case shape so that it sits on your wrist. Right. right? It's, it's more desirable. We always talk about slipping under the cuff, mm -hmm. right? Like the Speedmaster, it would lift the watch off and yeah. make it feel all wobbly. Yeah. The other problem with the traditional NATO is regardless of what format you have, you end up with this kind of flimsy piece coming off of the six o'clock lugs that is a single ply of material. And whereas you got a bunch of bulk on the other side, it feels really unbalanced. Right, right. And yeah. even with single pass NATOs, you still have a layer. Mm -hmm. And people oftentimes cut their dual passes into quote unquote a single pass. In there. But then the problem is you've kind of ameliorated one issue. Now you've introduced another, which is it's super flimsy. It's just one ply all the way around. And especially on heavier watches, it just kind of wobbles on your wrist, right? So it sounds like you've put a lot of thought into this. <laughs> and I know you've been working on something. Uh, we're calling it the zero pass strap. And the idea is I've always wanted a NATO look, but wanted to get rid of those uh, layers yeah. underneath the watch. So tell me about your design and how it solves the problem. Right. So about three years ago, I sort of played with the way that the strap would loop around the wrist in my head and mm -hmm. it just kind of clicked. So I woke up, I got you know, my strap box open. I got my Dremel tool out. I started hacking stuff in my living room at 3 a.m. I think my neighbors are not very happy with me. But by five, I had come up with this new design, but I was so delirious at that point. I threw it on my wrist and went to bed. And when I woke up at nine, looked at my wrist and I said, I think we have something here. Yeah, definitely. So what are the advantages specifically for this? And is there a catch? So the advantages are the two problems that I told you about earlier. It essentially solves all of them. As it's worn, there is no material between the watch and your wrist. Yeah, it's sitting flush on you. Right. And then because um, it does a 180 degree loop off of each spring bar, you get, now you have two plies of material coming off of each side. So it feels perfectly balanced on your wrist. Now, if we think historically, right. the NATO strap was designed for the military and it was designed in a way that if the spring bar breaks, the watch doesn't fall off your wrist, right? right? Now that is one feature that is gone with mm. the zero pass. So if you are part of SEAL Team 9 and you're going to <laughs> Afghanistan, don't, don't right. wear your zero pass, okay? Right. But I've personally been uh, really lucky with spring bars. I've never had any fail on me and I always recommend, and even if you, get ours is um, get new spring bars. Yeah, it's right? good practice to replace right. them anyway. Okay, Josh, you wanna try one on? That looks beautiful and and yes, I, I'm dying to get one on my wrist. Okay, there's a couple of differences, so pay attention. First, you have to start with the 12 o'clock spring bar removed, then you're gonna sort of pin the strap across the lugs and replace the spring bar over the strap so that now the strap is underneath. Then you're going to take the loose end of the strap and thread it through the six o'clock spring bar. And now this is going to form a loop underneath the watch. And you're actually going to place your hand through that loop. Now pull the loose end taut so that you can get the fit that you want. Now you're going to thread the loose end of the strap through this extra keeper that we've stitched backwards at the six o'clock side of the watch. Now just secure it like a normal NATO strap. You can tuck the extra material in on the back. And voila. All right, so what do you think? This is so cool. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's so secure. It's so comfortable. And I'm not feeling any of the strap underneath the watch. It's not there. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I really love this, Max. And, and it's been awesome to watch you prototype and, and come up with different iterations and refine this. And now that, you know, version one, if you will, is ready, what's your go-to-market strategy? Like, how can I get one of these things? Well, so, you know, we kind of wanted to protect this idea because it's taken so long uh, for us to bring it to life. Right. So first thing we did was we decided to file a patent for right. this design. Um, and then we reached out to a lot of the strap makers that I've luckily built a relationship with over the years with the YouTube channel. And uh, the two that really came through was David at the Strap Tailor, mm-hmm. who was based in London, uh, and the team over at Two Stitch Straps. And your leather selection, I have to say, is, is top notch. The quality is really, really well chosen. And I love the colorways. This is the highest quality top grain leather that will just age and naturally become more beautiful yeah. um, with time. And then the nylon ones are sort of a ribbed uh, type yeah. of material. It's buttery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, there's no sense of like plasticiness to this. Yeah, yeah. this is definitely the most supple kind of um, fabric that we've come across. Where do I go to buy one of these? Uh, you can go to anachronist.shop uh, and we obviously have a limited batch ordered and we really want to get this out to as many people as we can um, and really invite you guys onto this journey with us. It's taken a long time to make this happen. And yeah. It's been more difficult than I thought to make a physical product. Right. Um, And there's a lot of like sort of blood, sweat and tears. Right. Please tag us when you post your wrist shots with the zero pass straps. Let us know what new colors, new sizes, Uh, any feedback would be much appreciated on your sort of wearing experience. Really, the energy comes from the idea that if we can change the paradigm on some tiny sliver uh, of the watch game, yeah. then we're leaving a little bit of legacy and we've given back a little bit to the watch community. Right. And ultimately that is the thing uh, that makes me the most happy. That's awesome, man. Great work. I, I really love this. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't think you're going to get this watch back. 